because no doubt we will be asked to share this recording. Okay, so we're, we're going to start, just give everyone just a couple of minutes. Okay. Carolyn, you on mute? I'll just pop you on mute. Here we go. Just a bit of housekeeping out, guys. Um, if you could feel free to come off mute if you want to ask a question or even share a tip that you can think of during this session. Uh, if you do come off mute, just please remember to pop yourself back on mute. Otherwise, we'll be able to hear everything that's going on in your, in your household. Now, for this Zoom session, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you have a pen and paper handy so you can write down your favourite uh, tips that you're going to learn today. Uh, I have no doubt that I'm going to learn a few, new, uh, a few uh, tips today that I haven't heard of before, so I'm sure you will too. So pen and paper handy. Otherwise, uh, we will also share the recording after after the class. So keep a look out for the recording. Speak to your consultant that invited you today or speak to me. You would have received my email. Uh, so uh, you can get in touch with me via email or via our socials as well. So thank you again all for coming and uh, joining us in our uh, Zoom session tonight for Thermomix hints, tips and tricks. So we have lots to share with you tonight. But we're also going to show you and talk to you a bit about slow cooking in the new TM6. Now, we keep saying new TM6, but it's just occurred to me. It's almost a year and a half old. Old, not old. But, um, yeah, we've had it for a year and a half. Anyway, we're going to be talking to you about slow cooking. And um, we're going to be doing a pulled pork. But you can also do beef uh, using the blade cover. So we're going to show you how that works as well. If you don't have one yet. Okay, so we're going to start off with Sue Roberts. What are you going to share with us today? Um, I'm going to show you how to take your silver button off and clean underneath because it could affect the use of your Thermomix if there's crumbs and um, stuff that have fallen down behind it. So um, all you need to do is use a knife to gently ease the button off either side and it comes off. And then with your little um, blade brush, give it a clean around to get all the crumbs away. And then that's it. Put your button back on. And click it in. Done. That'll <laughs> save um, yeah, mess accumulating underneath your dial and affecting the use of your thermomix. So you see, if you see your, uh, your if, yeah, so when you're turning the dial, it's a little bit hard or it's not the, um, what do you call it, the speed isn't going up as smoothly as it should, check your dial. Perfect. Thanks, Sue. That must be the quickest presentation you've ever done. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sue. Okay, so now we're over to Paula. Hi. How are you doing? So I've got um, two tricks, tips actually to show you today. Um, the first one is uh, when you're doing a recipe in cookie do and you don't want to go through all the recipes, uh, you want to go to a certain step. Um, instead of clicking next, 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 I'm going to show you how to go directly to that um, step. So I'm just going to bring the camera closer to the screen so you can see it better. Okay. Can you all see that? Is that better? Okay, so for example, um, with this particular recipe, I'm just want to do the go to the step four. So all I do actually just go back, just I should actually go back again, start again. Sorry, we will start again with that. Um, uh, so what you do is you select the recipe, scroll down and under preparation, you, all you need to do is press on the actual step that you want to go ahead with. So with this one, I'm just going to click on, on step four and it takes me directly to that step there. Um, so yeah, and then I'll just do that. The next step is uh, while you're in the middle of cooking um, and you want to uh, use the scales or look at a cookie do recipe while in a recipe, all you need to do is uh, click on the home button 
scroll over to scales and you can actually use the scales while you're in a recipe, but that is the only function you can use while you're in a recipe. Um, and then you can also go back and you can also search cookie do. Let me actually go back. It's, it's actually take, we'll get, yep. So we can go and search if it lets me do it on cookie do. Sorry about this, guys. Paula, Not just, yeah. just, just swipe to the right. Yeah, I am. It's, oh, there we go. Sorry, my <laughs> fingers. Are, there's no grip in my fingers. Yeah, so just slide to the right and you can search up recipes on cookie do while you're actually in a recipe. And then just to go back to the position that you were at in the recipe, just click on the bookmark and it takes you exactly back to the same spot where you were cooking. Awesome, thanks Paula. And let me just highlight as well that it's the same with the TM5. With the TM5, you can also use the scales whilst it's cooking. You can also bookmark a recipe whilst it's cooking as well. Now to search cookie do, uh, you, you would need the TM6 for that. Um, and also with the TM5, you can select the step that you like um, in recipe detail, uh, tap on the step and it takes you to that step as well, just like the TM6. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Paula. Thanks for sharing those uh, those tips with us. And now over to Amanda. That's better. Can you hear me? Okay, so I'm going to share with you guys how to wash fruit in, in your Thermomix. Um, we know what it's like at the moment with COVID around and everybody touching fruit and maybe a little dirty, you want to give it a good wash. So you can do it in your Thermomix. I've got about one and a half litres of water in the bowl and I just put a splash of vinegar. A splash of vinegar in there. In my basket, I've just got some grapes that my kids absolutely love. I drop that in, put the lid on for about 10 seconds. I've got to put it on for about 10 seconds. And I'm going to put it up to speed seven to give it a good wash. I'm going to give it a good wash. Seconds. We're going to set that open. And then I'm going to also show you how to drain it as well. So, we'll get there. Now we're just going to get our spatula and with the book on the end, we're going to grab it, lift it up. I'm going to spell it the hand. I'm just going to show you the water quickly as well. It's quite murky. I don't know if it's a bit hard to see, but it's quite murky from what's just come off the grate. But now that we've done that, I am just going to let my fruit drain. So everything that's been washed now is just draining. And you can do that with any fruit, apples, pears, whatever you want to do, you can do that. And that's my tip. Hey Amanda, do you want to turn the Thermomix to the side so we can see how that um, simmering yep. basket and the spatula is positioned? It's sure. quite cool. You can just let it sit like that and then it just drains. And you can do this with a lot of things, with pasta, with anything really, you just let it sit there and it drains on its own. There we go, so that's okay. another. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for sharing that one, Amanda. Now we're over to Tamara. You ready, Tamara, with your pasta? I'm ready with my pasta. Hey, everybody. So my, can you hear me? I'm hoping. Um, so my tip is literally helping you get rid of strainer, Colander, I don't know what they're called. Um, pretty much junk that sits in your cupboard. So pretty much I have cooked the pasta. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody knows you can cook your pasta through the lid of your thermo mix. So our pasta is all cooked just in there. And I'm just gonna move the camera over to the sink. Just mind me. Okay, so. With your Varoma dish, we're just going to use that. So just you've got your holes down the bottom there. I'm literally going to hold that. 
got your fingers too, by the ends. I'm going to just tip the pasta in. And there we go. And then we just run it over with some cold water to stop it cooking. Now, the next tip, your lid. Pop that down the bottom and you can just carry it over to the other part of your bench and you'll have no drips dropping everywhere. And that is my tip when it comes to cooking pasta. Oh, I love it. Tamara, when I saw you do this the other day, I thought, oh! I never thought of using the Varoma as a colander or a strainer or whatever you want to call it. Like I don't know what to call it. I call it a strainer, but less junk in your cupboards, everybody. So you can literally, I had to dust this off for tonight. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> literally they can go more room in your cupboard and yeah, you get the most out of your thermomix. Fabulous. Thanks heaps, Tamara. <laughs> Love that tip. Over Thank to Carolyn. Hi, I'm actually going to be using two cameras so that you can see it a bit easier. Can you hear me? We can hear you, there's just a bit of an echo. Okay, so is that better? Uh, yeah, I think that's better, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to research a, a recipe on cookie do in Italian. So first I'm going to search. I'm going to change the filter. Scroll down. Take Australia off. And show the country of origin, which will be Italy. Show those results. Then I'm going to search. I want to cook chicken. So and here are all the recipes for chicken. So I'll go down and I like the look at this recipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold after I've downloaded Google Translate and it's going to translate. I don't know, can you guys see that? Stuffed chicken, bacon and zucchini back in packed. We can, we can see that. Yep, yeah. so then I'm going to go into start cooking on this side. 40 grams of breadcrumbs. Go on to next. 80 grams of parmesan. Next. Oh. Can you still see that? It's saying place the measuring cup. And that's pretty much the transfer to one bowl and hold from part. <laughs> but that's how you <laughs> translate it. So that's that's basically it in a nutshell. I hope that was Love. fairly clear. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It was very clear. And I, I love that tip because, for instance, for example, Italy, I think Italy has over 9,000 recipes. recipes. I was looking the other day because I just sold a thermix to, uh, to an Italian customer. We were having a look. There's 9,000 recipes. So it just opens up a whole new world oh, of recipes. And That's it's right. so easy with that Google Translate, just like you showed us how to do it. Yep. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Carolyn. Love it. Over to Ilham. My turn. Yay. <laughs> I've got a few um, tips today. So I'm going to su assume that most people don't know how to insert the butterfly whisk because that's obviously, for me, I find that's an important one. Um, so the butterfly whisk, the blade, pretend that this is the bowl. The this is the highest um, blade. And so it always goes behind the highest blade and it turns towards the blunt side. So, the, the, so that's the highest side of the blade. Then the blunt side, the, there's a sharp side and the blunt side, the, the, you turn it towards the blunt side of the blade. So it just sits on the top of the blunt side of the blade. Um, when, obviously when it's in the bowl, 
and there's food in the bowl, there's contents in the bowl, you can't see what's the highest or what's the lowest or so the trick to this is you can actually feel when you put it when you sit your blade onto the um you, when you sit your uh, butterfly whisk onto the top of the blade, um, you can actually feel that there's a, um, a like, let me show you. You can feel that there's a bigger gap between this uh, one, like in front of the high blade and be behind the high blade. You can actually feel it if you play around with it. So with the smaller gap is where it has to go. When there's food in your contents, you feel it and that's, so it goes behind the small, um, that's how you know that that's the, the highest blade when there's a smaller gap when you're twisting it. Okay, so um, the other one, um, the other tip that I've got is when you've used your butterfly whisk and um, you removed all your contents, there will still be batter, whatever you cook food or whatever uh, stuck to your butterfly whisk. You just lightly tap it on the side of your um, bowl and then the contents will fall into the bowl, scrape out the, all the contents of the bowl and then put the butterfly whisk back on to the blade, set the um, speed to speed four, and it will flick the rest of the contents off the blade, and then you can just scrape it off on the, around the side of the bowl. So that's what I've got for the butterfly whisk um, in your bowl. The other way to use a butterfly whisk is if you don't have a trivet and you're using your aroma. So if you're using your aroma for things like um, cooking a, a roast chicken or a leg of lamb, Obviously, you don't want, let me just remove the parsley that I've got in here. You don't want, um, sometimes the leg of lamb or the uh, roast chicken will actually cut, uh, block all your um, the holes in the aroma. You don't want the holes to be blocked because you need that air to circulate to cook the entire chicken or the entire leg of lamb or whatever you've got going. You put, um, if you don't have a trivet that you can get in the mix shop, just use your butterfly whisk, sit it at the bottom of your um, aroma have the chicken or uh, leg of lamb or whatever you're cooking, sit on top of that. And that will actually allow to, um, you know, keep the holes open and will allow the um, steam to circulate all around your, um, your chicken or whatever you've got cooking. Um, I don't know if anyone's mentioned that when you open up a Varoma, uh, no one's done Varoma yet, but if you open up your Varoma, you open up away from you, not towards you, the lid goes that way. And then, the trick that I've actually, that Belle was asking about earlier that I shared on my social media this evening was um, I use my Varoma or you can use your simmering basket or you can actually even use your um, splatter guard just to strip the leaves from the stems because some recipes ask for leaves only. Um, so you just put it in the, um, the you put your, your, this is probably a big, too big of a um, stem, you put the stem, into one of the holes and you just carefully push it in, but then you rip, whoop, I just broke that whole thing. <laughs> you rip it out. I just ripped the whole thing, but yeah, I've done a few earlier. Uh, you just carefully put it in and then you pull it out fast and then that's how you strip your leaves from the stem. Um, and you can do that with anything like sage, um, parsley, coriander, um, just the only, the only thing you can't do it with is um, time because time a fork or um, a sieve to uh, like a mesh sieve to do that. Um, but yeah, that's what I do with the Varoma. Um, what else did I, what was I meant, meant to mention tonight? Um, okay, then your deep cleaning of your bowl. Uh, you can just use your um, pre clean on, if you go to pre clean. Uh, you put you add about a litre of water so it goes to the one in your bowl. Let's see if you can see the one in your bowl. You, then you add 60 grams of um, vinegar and you just turn your uh, your selector to either fat or caramel or you oops or you turn it to that's no lid on or fat or caramel or to browning and that will help um, cook your um, water or boil the water at least and then obviously keep clean your thermics or if you want to do it in your tm5 or manually you just add the one liter of water 60 grams of vinegar um, and then just speed if you want to use your um, any speed actually up until two or four whatever but if you're going to use if you want to clean your butterfly whisk at the same time use speed two but don't do that when you're using the pre-clean mode in your tm6 because that will um, kick your butterfly whisk off your um, off your um, blade. 
But if you're gonna do it in a man manual mode, then you can use your butterfly whisk and clean that at the same time too. So that's all I have, about five to 10 minutes uh, manually, five to 10 minutes, 100 degrees, um, and then speed two if you're, using, if you're cleaning your butterfly whisk and that's it, that's all I have. And also after you've washed it, if you're doing it manually, um, once the five to 10 minutes is up, just um, hit turbo and just clean it. For, um, so that way the, the turbo will actually clean under the lid of um, your bowl too. Uh, but you don't have to do that when you're using the pre-clean option. That would be um, done automatically for you. And yep, and that's my tips today. And we'll have someone just shared an awesome tip as well, where um, Leigh Le Rowe uh, just wrote on the chat that um, you put the steamer in the basket with the butterfly whisk in the basket. Oh, you so it gives the yeah. basket a deep clean. I love it. See, I've never ever thought of doing that. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Love Thanks. it. <laughs> okay, well, I'm I'm up now, so I'm going to share some of my uh, tips. So one tip that I love is, um, so for instance, when I do vegetable stock paste, I make vegetable stock paste from frozen ingredients. So I always have a Ziploc bag in my freezer with, uh, you know, that I put in the odd carrot that bit of onion that I'm not going to use or that, you know, a little bit of um, zucchini. So when I want to make vegetable stock paste, I don't have to purposely go out and buy a whole bunch of ingredients for it. I've got them in my freezer. They're frozen. But because they're frozen, when once I start uh, cooking that vegetable stock paste, it's, it's going to be more liquidy than if it were fresh ingredients. So because we don't want a liquid stock paste, we want it nice and thick to help reduce that that uh, stock paste, um, instead of placing the measuring cup on the Thermomix lid, you replace that measuring cup with the simmering basket. So by popping the simmering basket on top, that's going to allow a lot of the steam to escape. So what you have in the bowl is going to re reduce further, but it will also avoid splatting around, around your bowl. So you don't come back to big mess. I also use this tip not only for vegetable stock paste, but if I'm making something like a curry, a stew, and I really want that sauce to thicken, I always replace the measuring cup with the simmering basket. So that's one of my favourite tips. And I actually learned that one early on um, as, as a um, as a Thermomix user. And this is because some of my curries were a bit runny. And um, so I really, really, really like that tip. My next tip is, um, so some of you uh, may be, you know, you find a recipe and you want to increase the quantity of that recipe, or sometimes you just want to cook for one person or two, or two people. So you want to reduce or halve the, the quantity of the recipe. So keep that in mind when you do that, when you're halving a recipe, you have to reduce the time by only 20%. Don't halve it, it's only 20%. If you're doubling a recipe, then you add 20% more time to that. So you don't have to double the time, it's just 20%. So don't forget that one, because uh, that's all you need with the Thermomix. Uh, what else is I gonna share? Let's see. Um, okay, also when you're adding powdery ingredients to the bowl something like cacao corn flour tapioca tapioca flour things like that icing sugar you have to scoop those ingredients with a spoon and plonk it in the bowl you can't uh sort of like sprinkle it into the bowl because those ingredients are so light that the scales won't won't measure it properly so you want to grab a scoop a spoon and scoop it in and then that way the the thermomix will measure it properly so you don't end up with um an excess of of, of ingredients in the bowl now i want to ask who out there has made a curry for instance and look at your butterfly and your lid and it's green so anyone has anyone have that happen to them so they yeah the, the so the butterfly isn't the, isn't grey anymore. So it's like an army green. Yeah, Jane. Yeah, it happens to all of us. Let me see if I've got my butterfly here. Yeah, so mine's looking a bit green as well. Can you see that? So when you have a really nice sunny day, 
All you need to do is pop your lid. My lid's actually fine this time. Pop your lid and your butterfly. Oh, look at um, Ilham. <laughs> we can tell Ilham uses a lot of turmeric. Turmeric, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so all you do, ladies and gents, is you just pop this in the sun. On a nice sunny day, pop it in the sun, turn it around a few hours later, and you'll find that the... Uh, Thermix accessories have gone back to their original color. Okay, so that's all you need to do. Pop it in the sun. Um, and also one last tip from me is don't be afraid to give your bowl a big scrub if it needs it. So remember it's really good quality stainless steel. So treat it like a pot on the stove. You know how sometimes we get a bit of caramelization on the bottom of our pots? Don't be afraid to let it soak with a bit of bicarb. If it doesn't come off, don't be afraid to use a bit of gumption. Even a scourer, it is not going to damage your bowl. You don't need to, you know, do things like an egg wash and eggshells and things like that. It, I promise you it's not going to damage your bowl by using a bit of gumption and a scourer if, if you need to use it. Really good quality stainless steel. It's not going to damage your bowl. And um, yeah, just let it soak for a bit and it'll all come off. Um, okay, I'm sure I have a few more to share, but I will stop talking now and pass over to Valentina. Thank you guys. Oh, let me just check the chat. All good. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, so my tip tonight, I've got a couple of tips as well. The first tip is, um, so I don't know if you guys are, um, know, but you can actually use your lid as a funnel. So I've made the basic vanilla cupcakes tonight for the kids. So what I've done is I've just got the cupcake pen. You can actually get this from the big shop as well. Um, so you pop the cupcake pen down and then just pop the lid on top. And you can do this with um, when you make your smoothies or your juices um, to avoid it splattering everywhere. You use that as a funnel. And then what you do, um, you just pour it in there. And if there's any, um, it just falls on top of the lid. Now, my second tip is the way you actually um, scoop um, your contents out of the bowl. So as you, both, as you guys know, there's a, there's a blunt side and there's a sharp side on the blades. So what we need to do is we need to turn clockwise. So that way we're pushing on the blunt side. Um, if you do it on the, on the sharp side, you actually um, can actually cut your, uh, well, cut your, um, your spatula, um, which I've done a few times. Um, I've actually sliced it in half um, because I'm just trying to get it out in a hurry. Um, but yeah, so you can do that. And um, yeah, so you do it on the clockwise. I don't know if you guys can see it there, but you just push it clockwise against the, the blunt side and just scoop it out. And then with my first tip with using the lid, you just pop it in there. So if there's any that spill on the side, all you do is just lift it up like that and pop it in there. My other tip, um, which I only found out not long ago and I thought this is such a great tip and I actually use it now when I go on my demos, on my cooking experiences, is if you go to, um, sorry, just grab a thing just to wipe, I've just dropped some on the floor. Um, if, you, if you're traveling with your Thermomix, what you can actually do is you can actually put a lot of, uh, you can put a few of your accessories in the actual bowl. So that way you limit um, what you're taking, what accessories you're taking that are gonna be loose. So what, what you do, if you do have a blade cover, um, which is also available on the mix shop, you can actually, and you want to take this away with you, um, you can pop the blade cover in there first. So you just pop the blade cover in as it goes, like that. So you pop the bowl in there. Then what you do, you get your measuring cup, your simmering basket, pop the measuring cup in the simmering basket, pop that in there as well. Then you get your lid, pop that on top too. Get your splash guard, pop your splash guard on there. And then, sorry, it's gone to sleep. So I'll just um, wait to come back just to wake up. Then what you do, you just click on the three dots there, go to settings, go to transportation mode, activate it, and everything is locked in there and it doesn't come out. So the only thing that you need to carry when you do go away is your butterfly and your varoma. And that's it for me. And the butterfly, you can pop it in the varoma. 
Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> pop that in there like that, and there you go. Awesome. Thanks so much, Val. Appreciate right. those tips. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move over to Elia. Hi, everyone. I've got some tips about dough. Um, so today I'm actually making the savoury roses from the barbecue book. And I've never made them before, but I was really excited to make them today. Um, so it is a very wet dough. Um, oh, while I'm here, I've got my baker's, my baking flour, my baker's flour in this 12.5 um, litre decor tub. And I emptied out a five, you know, the five kilo bag into this. So this is where I keep it. I just bought it at um, a Big W. And I always put some bay leaves in there, like in the in the flower to stop all the, you know, creepy crawly weevils and stuff. And I've never had a problem. And I always put a couple in there. So that's where I store my um, my baker's flour. Um, anyway, so also I always use the oven mat. This is used instead of baking paper and it can go in the oven, obviously. Now see how mine's brown. I don't know if you can see. So I do what Sandra does and pop this in the sun as well. And so it goes back to like this color, I guess, um, after I use it. I did not know that. <laughs> yes, I put it in the sun. Mine are brown, um, brown. Yes. I guess what's going in the, in the sun tomorrow. <laughs> How oh, funny. So um, with my dough, I'll show you. So it's very wet because there's a lot of um, olive oil and there's some poppy seeds in there. So to remove it from the bowl, I just turn it upside down and swivel the, the knob, I guess, the, at the bottom of the blade. That's been sitting there for a while, so it is a bit hard. Um, usually, you know, if I make pizza dough or whatever, it's really easy to, to slip out. So you do have to do it a bit hard if it's like this and just sitting there. Oh, of course, my thermomix just fell asleep now too after Valentina's. So it's slowly getting there because it's been sitting there. I let it prove in there um, while you guys were all doing your thing. So this is taking longer than usual, but it's slowly getting there. And like I said, if it's... um. If it's like a normal, you know, pizza dough, bread dough, it does, it does just fall out. This is a little bit wet. Anyway, it's coming. <laughs> the more I toggle with it, it's coming. Meanwhile, I was, um, for this recipe, you need wholemeal flour. And I didn't have wholemeal flour. I just had buckwheat kernels. So I milled that for 30 seconds and turned it into wholemeal flour, which was cool. There it comes, if you can see it dropping. Okay, it doesn't usually take this long, guys. <laughs> and also, so majority usually comes out. As you can see, there's heaps on there. So you can just do speed 10 for a few seconds. And now it puts all to the side so it's easier to be, um, to be removed. Um, also, I was going to say something today. So I... Um, I needed cream cheese for this recipe. And of course I told my husband, can you buy me cream cheese? He was going to the shops. He bought me cream, like thickened cream. So I don't know why he didn't hear the rest of cream cheese. And it's not like he bought me cheese as well, thinking that I said cream and cheese. Um, but <laughs> oh, really, that is so funny. <sighs> Typical, guys. Um, meanwhile, I still added it in um, as per recipe because that's all I had. But I did use just half, so it wasn't so liquidy. And it's still like the, you know, it still turned out good. So I guess what I'm saying is don't stress if you don't have the exact recipe um, ingredients. You can substitute and, you know, it'll still, it'll still be okay. Um, so let me just flick, flick the blade, speed 10, so that it's... Um, so it's um, So we'll see. And the dough would have flicked out of the blade, so it's easier to. And now just with my spatula, I'll be able to remove it. So there's nothing around the blades now. It's all on the side. Now, after I do this, I will do the pre-clean function um, on the TM6, and that'll, you know, make it easier to clean. Um, one more thing I was going to say, and now I can't remember. Probably that's it, I think. <laughs> I'm sure I'll think of it, up, I think of it after. Um, but yeah, so that's my little tip.
and I'll, I'm sure I'll share photos of what these little flowers will look like afterwards. Oh, Elia, you had the tip about the photo on the screen. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. So on certain recipes, you can see this here. This one has photos of what you have to do. Okay, so then you just press next and there's another little picture of how to roll it into the little runners. So a lot of the recipes now have videos, um, like the Fruity Dream one. It shows you how to, you know, stick the spatula in and um, mix it. Um, so I really like that function because when I was reading the instructions about how to turn them into little roses, I was like, oh, that looks complicated. But then knowing that there's photos on the screen, you know, it makes it really easy. And, yeah, the videos are great too if you've got a team six. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Elia. Um, we had Mary coming up and Mary wasn't feeling um, well tonight. So I'll, um, I'll share what she, she was going to share with us with you tonight. So something that I, I also only learnt recently, that's to do with the measuring cup. So, so this new measuring cup for the, that came with the TM6, you can also use it in your TM5 because the lid is exactly the same. So, um, and the great thing about this lid is that it doesn't fly off when you turn your lid upside down. How many of you have had your measuring cups fly off the counter onto the floor and just splatter stuff everywhere? I know it used to happen to me a lot. Now with this one, because it's, it's securely on the lid, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to remove. And I learned a tip, which is where you see the tip of the measuring cup, you put your finger underneath that section there, it comes off really easily, much easier than if you try and do it the other way. So you just grab it from the tip and lift it up. Makes it really easy to lift. Now, another thing that this lid does is, sorry, measuring cup, is by when you're seeing steam coming out of, the, out of your bowl, and you always want to see steam escaping from the bowl, by the way, uh, you can direct, you can change the direction of the steam by moving your measuring cup around. So if you want it to go more towards the window, if you've got your window a little bit ajar so the steam can escape, you can direct the steam just like that by moving the measuring cup. So I actually only learned that one recently and I think that one's pretty cool. Something else uh, that I learned recently, and it was from Mary, who can't be with us today, unfortunately. So I wanna show you. So let me just turn it around to make this easier. Let me, okay. All right, so imagine you have your, you know, doing manual cooking and you've, you've programmed your Thermomix like that, but you completely change your mind and you want to clear it. If you swipe three times, it clears it. Can you see that? Uh, I'll just show it again. And But you need to, you do need to swipe it three times because imagine if you just, you know, it was just once then um, what would happen was you'd be clearing what you programmed accidentally all the time because we're always running our fingers over the screen. So you actually just need to go three times like that and it clears the screen. How cool is that? You can also use the dial to move from function to function. Okay, so if, you're, if your hands are too wet and your screen's not going to work, then you can do this with the dial. Okay, okay. So yeah. If you hold, if you, you set your dial and you actually yep. hold your hand on that look and go back to time, hold yeah. and, sit, and sit your finger and hold your finger down. And oh, then, that works as well. Look yeah. at that. Yeah. There you go. Can I, I'll try it on. Oh, perfect. <laughs> so there's several ways you can do it. Amazing. Now, I'm actually not sure if you can do this in the TM5. Um, if um, I'm pretty sure you can, I remember that you can do do this with the five. I'm just not sure about clearing. You can, the, you can hold your finger on the five and it goes to zero. As well, uh, perfect. Okay, all right. Sorry about that close up just there at my nostrils. Okay. <laughs> all right, so uh, I think we've gone through all of our hints and tips. Is, can anyone think of anything else I would like to share or anyone like to pop off? I'll pop something in the chat. Oh, okay. Uh, when I oh, love this tip. Thank you so much for, for reminding, 
reminding us of it. So when milling ingredients, line your lid with either baking paper or glad wrap. Tap the lid firmly to remove the splatters and this helps prevent stains and the contents in the seal, around the seal of the lid. That is perfect. And that's great when, yes, when you're milling uh, fresh spices. Love that tip. I have sometimes taken the whole base off to get the dough out. Yes, it can be a bit, bit fiddly sometimes. Uh, what you can do to get uh, some dough out of the uh, bowl, especially if it's a very wet dough, is just put a little bit of flour back in, just flour back in, in the bowl and then whiz it on speed eight to 10. And that helps release everything from around the, the blaze and, and the, the, the bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna show you about the blade cover and talk to you a bit about slow cooking before we um, uh, head off. So this recipe takes four and a half hours. I'm not gonna keep you here for four and a half hours, but I'm gonna get it started. So, uh, cause this will be my uh, dinner tomorrow. So uh, this particular recipe, let me just see, there we go, um, is called, so I'll just go to my week and it's called uh, da, 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 pulled pork burgers. Now this, this recipe is in ounces. Um, so I had to do a bit of Google you know, on my, with Siri, hey Siri, what's 28 ounces in grams? And it told me it was 800 grams, very, very easy. Um, or you can just do a Google to find out what it is. Um, so this recipe, we need to use the blade cover. So that's the blade cover. And I'm gonna show you how to pop it in the bowl. So it's very easy. The, the blade cover has waves which, uh, so for instance, the tallest wave here will go on top of the tallest blade. And all you do is just pop it on top like that. So that blade is gonna stay on whilst it slow cooks for four and a half hours. Um, but I'm going to remove it because we need to start our recipe. Okay, so we're gonna start cooking. Um, so this recipe says, just to ensure the success of a slow cooked recipe, you do need to follow the exact uh, ingredients and the exact uh, amount. Now the, th the Thermomix can slow cook up to eight hours from memory. Ilham, are you able to check that for me? I'm pretty sure it's eight hours in the Thermomix uh, or is it 10? So yeah, I think it's eight. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna add eight hours. Yeah, it is eight hours. Yeah. Oh, okay. fabulous. Thank you. And I find that slow cooking, I've, I've already done a, a few slow cooking recipes in the TM6. I do have a, your traditional slow cooker. I find the Thermomix is a lot faster than your traditional slow cooker. So um, you're actually going to save on electricity um, compared to a, a slow cooker. So we're going to throw in two, two garlic cloves for, for this recipe. And we're going to chop it up three seconds on speed seven. Okay, and now we're going to insert the blade cover. So this, this recipe is a really simple recipe. So there's our chopped onion and garlic. Most of it is up around the bowl. But so we're just gonna leave it like that. We're gonna pop in the blade cover. And now we're gonna add our pork. So this is pork shoulder that I've cut into three, four centimeter pieces. So this sits on top of the blade cover. And then we're going to add four ounces, which is, oh, I, I can't remember now, but I had to do a Google <laughs> what it was. Four ounces of, of onions that we just uh, cut into wedges. Some rosemary. I'm not going to add rosemary because it's in my garden and I forgot to get it, but I will add it later. And eight ounces of water. I don't really, I can't remember what eight ounces is either. But what you do is you just keep weighing until you get to eight, really. It's as easy as that. And if you go a little over, a little over makes no difference. Just don't go doubling this recipe. Um, and for pulled pork, uh, this has 800 grams of pork. That's a lot of pork for pulled pork, actually. It's going to make a lot. So six ounces of apple cider vinegar. Wow, that is a lot of vinegar. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, there we go. And vegetable stock paste. So one teaspoon. So if you don't have this in your fridge, 
get some made because um, this is liquid gold. I always put a little, little bit more than what it says. Okay, and remember, you don't have to use fresh ingredients. Keep saving those um, odd vegetables and keep them in your freezer. Okay, now the, this recipe has a lot of barbecue sauce. It's 12 ounces of barbecue sauce. So I'm probably just gonna remove the lid. Okay, well, it's probably a whole, whole thing of barbecue sauce, almost. Here we go, whoops, 12 ounces. So this is obviously an American recipe. <laughs> and we're going to put the lid with the measuring cup. And that's all it is. So if you can see there, four and a half hours and then it's got 205 degrees that's fahrenheit obviously that would be roughly i'm thinking about 85 degrees and then all i do is just turn the dial for slow cooking and it's going to slow cook for me now because i'm not going to cook that now because that means i'll have to get up at one o'clock in the morning um i don't know if you guys have seen these from our mix shop so they're silicon lids and these fit perfectly on our bowls. So what you do is you just pop it on top like that. Hang on. Okay. And then we just do this. And the contents inside are nicely sealed. Put this bowl in the fridge so I can cook it tomorrow for four and a half hours. And then once the pork is cooked, it'll shred it for me. Obviously I need to remove the blade cover and shred the pork. So there's a pulled pork that you can do in the TM6 with slow cooking for four and a half hours and it'll shred the pork for you as well. There you go. So just wanted to show you that feature of the TM6. Does anyone have any questions? You can change the ounces in settings. You can change the ounces. In, so can I? So if I go into settings, can will it convert the ounces to grams? Is that what you're saying, Chris? I use it for my old recipes and they're yeah. all in ounces. So I go into settings and change it to ounces instead of metric. So I can do my recipes that I've been using oh. for 30 years in ounces. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then I'll change it back to metric. Yeah. And then you put it back to metric. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas that's awesome. That's I've, really good. I had no idea I could do it until recently when I was looking at oh. something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. So this is when you're doing manual cooking, you can put your Thermomix to ounces and it weighs everything in ounces. Yes, yes. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Um, you can also insert the simmering basket when milling spices. It keeps it at the bottom of the bowl. Yes, Elman, I've, I've, I recall hearing about that one as well. That's a great tip. Um, Paula, there is, do you know, as I was going through this recipe, I realised um, that I think I have come across that recipe in grams. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've done that recipe so many times. I think I haven't come across the American one before. Oh, well, there you, you go. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And also uh, something that um, Sue reminded me of today is that when you want to tenderise your meat, so your meat is just really nice and soft, um, you just sprinkle some bicarb on your meat and just let it sit there for a couple of hours and it, that the, the bicarb tenderizes your meat just then just remember before cooking you just need to rinse it and that's it um, Sandra I also did the pre-clean I don't know if you remember what my bowl was like with the dough and the pre-clean like look how good that is and even the lid so you know it really like the dough was so sticky and everything and it was just a few minutes I added, you know, water to cover the blade, a little squirt of um, dishwashing liquid and like how good is that, you know? I love the pre-clean mode. It's awesome. Yeah. It just comes out sparkling clean all the time. I just thought of one more tip. So when you're milling ingredients, we were just talking about milling, your blades need to be super dry. Otherwise that milling isn't going to work. So rather than taking your bowl apart and, um, you know, wiping those blades and, what you do is just um, 
pop pop your bowl in the thermomix space with with nothing inside just go to speed 10 for a few seconds and that air circulating in the bowl dries the blades and if there is any water on the blades it flicks it to the side of the bowl so then you can grab a tea towel wipe it and then your bowls are dry and they're ready for milling and that is crucial absolutely crucial if you want to melt chocolate if your bowl isn't dry then your chocolate's going to seize and it's just not going to work so keep that in mind so uh on how to dry those blades really easily okay i think that's it if and one i have another tip for you Sorry. okay <laughs> um, I do a cheats way of drying my bowl too is I put my tea towel into the bowl and do it yeah. on reverse at speed one until it's dry. Okay. I have <laughs> it's probably not one that you would before. recommend. <laughs> it's probably not one that I would recommend. No, but I do. <laughs> you have to be just really super careful. If you do up that speed accidentally, then you can run into problems. Right. Like it. Yeah. If you, if you do do that to just one. Yeah. Yeah, just do it really slowly. <laughs> and sorry, just a quick one. You um, when you go, remember the um, I don't, I can't remember if it was Paula that uh, mentioned about getting out of the recipe to go into the scales. You can just click the three dots up the top next to next two, and that um, gets you to scales two or to recipe. The scales as well. Yeah. Elman, I love that tip as well. I knew we'd be learning so much from each other today. So Elman has share that after spitting the water out you can heat it up for one minute on 60 degrees and this will really dry your bowl and blade we never thought of that Ellen, how long have you had a thermomix for i know you've been a consultant for 10 years <laughs> just that long as well <laughs> fantastic oh well thanks for sharing that tip i really like that one never thought of that one either there you go <laughs> All right, well, I hope everyone enjoyed tonight's uh, session on Thermomix hints, tips and tricks. We'll be sharing the recording on our Facebook page pages. So keep a lookout for that. If you don't, if you need the recording and don't come across it, just let me know and I can forward it to you. Uh, get in touch with your consultant if you'd like to learn more. We offer uh, as many learning demos as you like. And I can guarantee you that at every learning demo, you learn something new. So um, get in touch with your consultant if you want to learn more from us so you get the most out of your investment. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, my team, for presenting tonight. You were all wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great night. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.